Hey everybody and welcome to my second of two videos on this, the KW Practina 2A. In the first video we talked about what all of the things on the camera are. In this video we're going to talk about what all of they do, what all of them do, and um, talk about how to take a picture with this camera. So there's no battery in this camera, which is really nice. There's also no light meter. So the first thing we're going to, so if you want to meter with this camera, you can either use the Sunny 16 rule or a handheld light meter. Sunny 16 simply means that in full sun, with the sun to your back, whatever your, you, uh, your, your film speed is, if you set your lens to f16, your shutter speed should be the number closest to your film speed. The first thing we're going to do with this camera is mount and unmount lenses. Now, as I said in the first video, I have no native mount Practina lenses. So this is a Practina T-mount adapter with a T-mount lens on it. There's a little notch here in the top, a little notch here in the mount. I'm just going to line those up and drop it in, and then you're going to rotate the breech. Oh, come on, stay closed. Clockwise until it stops, and that's going to hold the lens in place. To unmount the lens, you simply... I'm just going to leave it. To unmount the lens, you simply rotate the breech counter or anti-clockwise, lift the lens out, and that's that. That is how you change lenses. So you can pop that one out and if you have a different lens or in my case just a different T-mount lens and you want to put it on you can swap the adapter. Anyway, really simple. It's, it's a, very similar to the Canon FD breech interface um, but I find this one to be a little bit smoother in operation and um, because it's a little bit of a less complex breech it's a little bit less fiddly. Next thing we're going to do is load film. So to load film, you need to remove the film back. Now, if you're out in the field, make sure you don't drop the film back because that would be a challenging piece to replace if it were bent. Lift up the film rewind knob. I'm going to drop our cassette in here and drop the knob back in place. Pull out a leader. Advance this until you can see the film take up slot right there. Feed that through a little bit. And there we go. Hit the shutter button. Now we know that it's being taken up properly. And we'll put the film back on again. Nope, that is not correct. We will put the film back on again. There we go. That's correct. Okay, we're going to adjust by turning clockwise the frame counter until we get to zero. Because I cannot remember if this counts up or down. Let's find out. So it counts up. So what we want to do is actually adjust it when you load the film to two or three frames behind zero. And then you want to advance it until you get to zero. or one, whatever your preference is. So we're at one right now. We're going to make sure that our ISO is set correctly. Let's pretend we have 400 ISO film. We're going to make sure that there's no tension in the, in the film, or there's no slack in the film by rotating this, the direction of the arrow. Now, when you take a picture, watch this knob here. If this knob turns the opposite direction of the arrow, you know that the film's being taken up in the camera and that you've loaded it correctly. And that's how we load film. It's really simple, and as we take pictures, the film's going to be advanced through the camera. Now, I'm gonna give you a chance here to listen to the, the shutter on this camera because it has a very quiet focal plane shutter. It has one of the quietest focal plane shutters I've ever used, and it's a fascinating thing to me that 50s cameras like this and the, the Pentax, Asahi, Pentax, and K, and S, have these really, really silent focal plane shutters compared to later 35 millimeter SLRs where um, you know some some of them are loud enough to to be noticed in a crowd it, at any rate it's, it's just fascinating to me how how well engineered the 50s SLRs are so film in real life is one and done so you do not want to open up the film back until you've taken all of your pictures and completely rewound the film into the cassette again but I want to show you what happens inside the camera when you take a picture. 
So our shutter box is right here, right? So the image plane is right around in this area. So when you take a picture, the shutter will open, allow light to reach the film, which is held flat by the pressure plate so that the light focuses correctly. And then when you advance the film, it pulls fresh film out of the cassette and takes up the used film in the take-up spool. And you can see here the film pressure or the film tension sprocket is keeping the film from moving backwards until it comes time to, you've, when you've used the entire roll of film and you've kept the back closed the entire time, of course, it comes time to rewind the film, which you do by pushing the film release uh, button, and now you can rewind the film. So what you want to do after you take all of your pictures is completely rewind the film into the cassette, and you don't want to open the film back until it's completely rewound into the cassette. And this is how it goes back through the camera, just like that, very smooth operation. And I'm not gonna rewind it the whole way because I need to reuse this cassette for future videos. But once you've rewound the film into your cassette, you take it out, and if you're gonna keep shooting, you just pop in your next roll of film and just repeat the process. If you are not going to take photos, you just make sure you trigger your shutter and that you are then done for the day. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the flash sync speed and using a flash on this camera in general. There is no hot or cold shoe with this camera, so the only way to trigger a flash is by connecting it with the cable to that PC port. You'll wanna get a flash bar, which I do not have one that isn't in use right now. Um, basically a flash bar is a piece of metal that comes, that screws into the bottom, into the tripod socket, comes out to the side and has another screw or a, an accessory shoe built into it that a flash plugs into. And then you just take the PC cable from the flash and then plug it into the camera right here. Uh, so that's how you would connect the flash. To use it, you want to make sure that your shutter speed is set to the flash sync or slower. I believe that the slower shutter speeds work. They should. Mechanically, there's, there's no reason that they should, but the information online was did not fully agree with, uh, with that. It said that the, um, the, shutter speed was, the shutter sync speed was only 1 50th. So uh, something about that just doesn't sound right to me. Anyway. So when you're gonna use a flash, you wanna set it to the flash sync speed. Just make sure that you're, you're using an X type. You make sure you are set to X, otherwise you will not have proper flash sync um, timing on your camera. Make sure you're using a regular modern X flash, which is something, any, any flash you could buy today is an X type flash. Um, if you don't have interchangeable bulbs in your flash, it's an X flash. And then to take a pic, when you use the flash, you just take a picture like you would any other time. The flash will trigger and you are good to go. So the next thing let's do is take a look through the viewfinder here. So as you can see in the viewfinder, there is nothing in it at all. It's just a plain matte focusing screen. So there's no guides, no light meter. It is a very nice and luxurious focusing screen because it's wide open. It's not as bright as modern screens, obviously, but there are no distractions in it, so you can focus solely on your composition. It's, it's, very, it's a very nice shooting experience. If you, when you take a picture, what you'll want to use is either a handheld meter or the Sunny 16 rule, shaded 8, indoor 4, things like that, to get a proper exposure. And then you just have to adjust your shutter speed and your aperture to get the uh, correct settings for a proper exposure take your picture, and you're good to go. And that's how you take a picture with this camera. You can do double exposures by holding down the film rewind button and advancing as, and holding the film rewind knob and, and advancing to rearm the shutter without the film moving. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, if you're using one of these, I really don't recommend doing complicated mechanical things like that. These are old cameras, and doing things like that risk damaging the mechanism. So um, with these, if you're gonna use it, just try to keep it simple in as much as you can. So the focusing screen in the, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is how to change the prisms and the focusing screen because the focusing screen is interchangeable on this camera. On the bottom of the camera, there's a little switch. If it's red, you cannot remove the prism. 
if your oh sorry if it's red you can remove the prism if it's if you cannot see the red dot then it's locked this prism does not want to lock so anyway so it's red we can remove the prism and we're just going to slide it backwards like that there we go huh it should lock weird this mechanism here is what allows the prism to lock in place and when you slide uh, there you go, you can probably see that there's a little lock there that slides into place. So there must just be something about this that's a, that was just a little bit misaligned. Let's try that again. See if I can get it to work. Nope, this prism does not want to lock into place. Okay, at any rate, now once the um, prism is out, we can push these two, these doodads back. There we go, so we just push these two retaining things back. You have to lift them up at the very end. And now the focusing screen just pops right out. Um, this is a glass focusing screen. It is not plastic. So um, it's a little bit easier to clean and care for. But if you were to pick up one that was, say, had a rule of thirds grid on it or um, something like that, you could just interchange them. And then once it's in place, Just pop these springs back in. There we go. And you are set to go, and that's going to hold it in place so it doesn't fall out. Then you can grab whatever prism you're going to put back onto the camera, slide it on, lock it in place so it won't fall out, and you're good to go. And that's how you change the prisms and the focusing screen. And that is everything to talk about with the Practina 2A. It's there, it's a, it's a simple camera, but it can really do basically whatever you need it to do, 99% of photography. There's maybe a handful of specialized things that would be very hard to do with this. But uh, realistically, it is as capable as any camera that was made for 35 millimeter film, at, at least until the late 90s. Uh, with the exception of the shutter speed being the only limiting factor and that it only goes up to one one thousandth of a second, which is still blisteringly fast in, for most uses. That is it for my second of two videos on the Practina 2A.